What's happening guys, Silent Mike back with another video. If you saw the title, this is part two. I didn't plan on making a part two. I didn't really even plan on making a part one, but it just popped in my head and that's why I shared it with you guys. Um, thank you all for the views. Thank you for the likes. Be sure to subscribe right now and smash thumbs up if you like this type of content. Few things to get over. Uh, let's keep the comments friendly. You can state your opinion, but don't be rude. Last comment section uh, was actually pretty good. Obviously, there's some people going a little bit nuts, but uh, a lot of just people making their opinions and stating their views, uh, which is great. I have been smashing on Twitch, so if you guys are into gaming at all, click the link in the description, follow, subscribe, however Twitch works, I don't even know. I'm playing the new Call of Duty World War II, gonna try to stream uh, Mondays through Thursdays, evening time, seven to 9 p.m. Pacific or so. Stay tuned on here and Instagram. I'm heading to the East Coast in December, so hopefully some meetups, um, seminars, something to come, more info to come on that. To get to the topic at hand, tested versus non-tested federations and their records and how those records, um, from my point of view, have been closing. The gap has been closing. And now there's a million factors and we can't even begin to discuss how, why, when, or what because uh, the number one thing which you all stated, which I did state in the video, if you watch the video, but basically, in drug-tested powerlifting, not everyone is drug-free. In non-drug-tested powerlifting, not everyone is on drugs. So these variables make it very difficult to understand maybe what um, the differences are. Plus, each federation, primarily the drug-tested that is popular is the IPF or the USAPL versus all other federations, um, have multiple rules that can cause some issues, right? Because we have a stiff bar on the deadlift, which you guys can argue all you want, but it may make it harder to deadlift. Typically, there's two-hour weigh-ins versus 24-hour weigh-ins, which makes a weight cut a little bit different, which changes the weight classes, let alone the weight classes themselves are so different because we're dealing with, um, you know, <clears throat> kind of a kilo weightlifting and then just the typical powerlifting, which is, you know, for example, 181s, 198s, 220, 242, and over here we have 183, 205, 231, 264. So although they're close, they're not exact. There's multiple, multiple ways, reasons. People brought up judging. Judging is kind of hard to make an argument against. Sure that the IPF does have a, a history or a rumored or a reputation for being a little bit more strict, but there's plenty of federations on the non-drug tested side that are also very strict and consistent with their judging. Points that I want to bring up. All I was trying to say in terms of how much steroids maybe help strength or not, clearly they do, otherwise people wouldn't take them. Um, and when we're talking steroids, let's just throw in all performance enhancing drugs that may be against the rules. You know, there are the Lance Armstrongs, the Barry Bonds, plenty of NFL players, baseball players, um, football, basketball, MMA, etc. So there are performance enhancing drugs that do, uh, you know, help you perform better. All I was stating is that if you look at the top of bodybuilding in the, uh, enhanced world and the non-enhanced world we're almost talking you know anywhere from 60 to 100 pounds of lean body mass difference that's an insane amount of difference where if you looked somehow if we could guarantee that the top of drug tested and is off and the guarantee the top of non-drug tested is enhanced that i think that gap would be closer and i think we could make that same argument for other sports where in mma you know you take uh, the same genetic guy or whatever in the same weight class <clears throat> or, or maybe just one of the best fighters in the world and we guarantee he's drug free and one of the best fighters in the world and he's using performance enhancing drugs that the gap is at least closer not that the performance enhancing drugs aren't happening at all and this is 100% just my hypothesis just in my head from things I've seen throughout the years in the industry and talking to people that perhaps have used or haven't used and then just paying attention to some of it, that is just a trend that I see that it helps hypertrophy more so than it may help performance. Of course, people brought up in the non-drug tested that uh, it's not drug free, which I mentioned as well. Sure, there are some people that get through the drug tests and the drug tests are across all sports. Um, not catching everyone. Um, if that was the case, we'd have a very different world. And, and this is such a popular conversation when people are talking about powerlifting and even weightlifting to an extent, but not so much when you just bring it up to the Olympics or professional sports. No one's bringing up the NFL or the NBA or people getting by in the UFC, um, where I'm sure these organizations may be doing their best, but it's of course not gonna happen. One, uh, if you've seen the movie Icarus, which I talked about in the past, 
Uh, there's people on the inside or outside politically that are maybe making decisions for the organization or underneath the organization or even just hidden on their own, uh, hidden agendas to pass people in the drug test. I've heard of people uh, getting certain types of jobs, whether it's politics or a police officer or whatever it might be, and you still go under a lie detector test, although many, many people have said lie detectors tests are not accurate, but you still put those to the test because those are the best we have. And I think that's the same with the drug test for performance enhancing drugs. Some people um, do the best they can with the science that we have right now. Sure, there's new drugs coming up that people can get through, but m that wasn't my point. My point wasn't to say that drug testing is 100% this and that, or say steroids just do this point was just to open a conversation of some thoughts that popped in my head and because it's my channel I can do that and because you guys are the fam you can comment below and also communicate another huge factor that brings up um, kind of a difference in between some of these records especially when it comes to the squat I think the deadlift as well because the deadlift bar versus stiff bar, stiff bar but another trend that I've seen is the best lifters that I've seen in the non-drug tested often compete in knee wraps and in the USAPL IPF knee sleeves is the raw division where over here they do uh, belt knee wraps wraps excuse me belt knee wraps and wrist wraps um, for for raw still and some of the best lifters tend to go there because they want to lift the most amount of weight possible that's perhaps what leads them to take some performance enhancing drugs use a deadlift bar and use knee wraps because they're just trying to move the most amount of weight we're over here not sure their goals but the point is that they're not perhaps as many people taking the step into performance enhancing drugs not as many people taking the step into knee wraps which leads to my point in the other video where i think the pool in the ipf UP, usapl has grown larger than the genetic pool in other federations because of the ease of entry the ease of entry with all you need is knee sleeves you don't even need knee sleeves and a belt is much easier to get into the sport than into knee wraps knee wraps are painful there's a little technique to them they're a little scary they're a little more dangerous and as you uh, get further into powerlifting gear suits bench shirts etc single ply multi ply it does get a little bit more dangerous and it turns up that level so the ease of entry over here to hop into a USAPL IPF drug tested federation not only because maybe it's less intimidating because you hear the term drug tested but also because of the equipment used in the raw division I think this has gained grown in popularity as well as plenty of influencers po uh, very popular powerlifters YouTube channels etc um, that promote the IPF my boy Johnny Candido and others have helped grown that uh, again going to the genetic pool being grown here um, and leading to that gap being smaller many people brought up the argument of money being involved that the IPF and the USAPL are not paying athletes um, that they're paying their own way and there's no competitions that you make a lot of money although I do believe the Arnold you can make some cash money um, and that in the other divisions the um, other <coughs> federations people are getting paid um, and again I don't think that has anything to do with anything um, there is some cash especially a couple meets that have popped up in the re recent years in a non-tested federation uh, that you do get a nice sum of cash if you win the entire competition but I don't think you get an 18 to 30 year old that's just getting into powerlifting and they're looking at the top saying man I really want to make you know 20 30 grand putting my body through this torture and that's leading them to performance enhancing drugs or whatever your argument was for the money. Powerlifting has been around for a couple decades. Uh, it's been popular for a couple decades and still even when there was no money, no popularity, uh, the popularity of powerlifting has literally only taken off in the last I'd say three to five years. Before that, even four years ago, it was such a different landscape in the strength and conditioning and powerlifting world and people still maybe even by ratio, by percentage, more people took performance anti drugs and there was no popularity and no money involved. So I just think the argument of money doesn't play a role. Sure, when you're the top of the game in golf or baseball or something like that, it may because it may you know, taking a, a little bit of performance enhancing drugs may elongate your career and allow you to earn a little bit more money. But then even then you can make an argument, okay, you've made so much money playing in the MLB for five years. Do you really need another million? And of course, people's mentality, you do want to make more and you do want to progress and all that. That's a whole different discussion for another day. But my point is, I don't think for many people to get on performance enhancing drugs, especially in powerlifting, let alone other sports, is driven by purely monetarily gain even at the upper levels i think nba nfl mlb etc i think that their their deep 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 
deep need and want to be the best, to be the greatest of all time, leads them more likely to take performance enhancing drugs than purely the money. Another argument that, uh, you know, I guess you could argue because this one is a little bit, uh, you know, the IPF is a little bit more strict in drug testing than maybe the other one's not testing at all, is that the, 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 the only gap difference is due to the dose or the type of performance enhancing drugs the athletes are using, meaning that in the IPF, maybe they have to cycle off or maybe they have to use less of a dose so they can sneak by the test where in these other ones, they're running shit tons of gear, which people, uh, you know, even in the non-tested uh, federations, people are always talking, that guy takes so much and I only take this much and we're still lifting the same. And conversations like that happen all the time. I think that it's just another human nature excuse for what, um, placing you get in life or what placing you get in a powerlifting meet. People are always wanting to look up at the person above you and nitpick something about them, why they're there and you're here. Uh, I don't know if that's the actual thing. I guess that could be the case. Um, but then, you know, the, the whole thing about what drug tests, when, how, and what, um, people brought up that the USAPL doesn't follow, uh, you know, USADA and WADA rules, but you go to the Olympics and there's people passing tests left and right and that's supposed to be the most strict testing in the entire world, WADA. Um, whether the IPF does it in or out of season, I don't think plays that big of a role as there's all these uh, Olympians from every country, even though uh, Icarus brought light onto Russia, I think every country is guilty of bending the rules of some nature, whether it's through um, WADA itself or through their own organizations to, to get an upper hand on other countries because it's such a bare-boned, caveman-like thing that in our world, in the Olympics, someone, <clears throat> a nation having a great Olympic team and winning more gold medals still represents something beyond just a race or just beyond a long jump, just beyond weightlifting or tennis or golf or whatever it is. It still represents a power move in our nation. And that's kind of the cool thing about athletics and the weird thing about athletics. Let me know your guys' thoughts below. Be sure to check out my Twitch stream. We will be playing some Call of Duty. Just a general time to hang out for me to play some games, which I would have played anyways, but now I'm inviting you guys to come and chat with me. I do appreciate you. Give you a thumbs up. I do appreciate you. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Comment below. Also, maybe ask some questions below, and we'll keep this series going. It can maybe transform into different topics, almost conversational podcast style. I appreciate you guys. Salam, Mike. I'm out of here.